Check it out. In 2006, when the emo movement was at its peak, a band from Long Island named Autumn in August burst onto the scene. Oh, man, I listened to that song so much back then. The coolest thing about Autumn in August for me is the lead singer, Alice Tillman. I mean, the music was great, huh? but what I wouldn't have done to give her my finishing maneuver, the menage a trois. I remember the first time I saw the music video for P.S. Whatever. The second it ended, I torrented the entire album. Should I not say that on TV? Yeah, Autumn and August, they were, that, they were the type of band that could co-headline those big shows, but couldn't really hang out with all the, the other acts at the after party, you know, uh, liabilities with drinking beaches and things of that nature. So I'm pretty sure that P.S. Whatever was written about me. There's a lot of songs written about me. Their first tour was actually opening for me. And for the first few nights, the audience really didn't know who they were, but as their song, P.S. Whatever, got more and more airplay, they essentially became co-headliners with us. And to be honest, there are a few things more awkward than the opening act getting an encore from the audience. For a minute there, they actually made it acceptable for men to wear light blue makeup on their face. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes when I'm at home alone, I'll put on P.S. Whatever, throw on a little bit of the blue makeup, and just get wild with it. You know, I don't judge myself. I allow myself that happiness. My prom date actually wore the ANA blue makeup on his face. He and I are no longer in speaking terms. In a lot of ways, L. Tillman was the voice for a generation of young people who consider themselves different. You know, she wasn't going to tanning salons, singing about her hips, or hanging out in Laguna Beach. For a while there, they were one of the biggest bands in rock music. But then in 2008, at the peak of their popularity, they inexplicably broke up while working on something called Romance in the Digital Age. 